All right, I'm gonna give you an unscripted, straight up rundown of the 2015 Intimidator Electric 48 volt compared to a 2014 Hunt V, uh, which I happen to own both of them. I just got the Intimidator, so I owe no allegiance to either one. I'll try to be as objective as possible, but very early on I could see some pretty high standards. So we'll see how it goes. All right, here's the front view. An obvious difference on beef and size. The Intimidator has a much wider footprint, which I find very useful for stability and not so tippy. Uh, the Intimidator is just built way beefier and way tougher. Take a look at the suspension. All right, and that front drive shaft right there. That's probably an inch, maybe inch and a quarter bar. It's independent A-arm. And here, uh, the metal is on the Hunt V is just much thinner. Thinner tubular bars. And uh, the drive shaft, well, I guess it's fairly similar. A little shorter here. The Hunt V has two motors, like a golf cart, a front and a rear, where I'll show you the Intimidator has one big motor made in Germany, and it has a drive shaft to the front and the rear. As far as options goes, I got almost every option for each of them, a front winch. This one's, uh, I believe, a 3500. The Intimidator's a 4000. Uh, the Intimidator winch plugs in the front right here, which I like. The Hunt V winch plugs inside and the dashboard here. All right, looking at the front suspension again, you could kind of get an idea on the frame size there, that tubing. And the suspension here is an adjustable, uh, typical ATV uh, suspension. Over here, you look at the Intimidator frame is welded, much heavier, much beefier. Suspension is much thicker, definitely a heavier design. The Nerf bars here, you could see there's one, there's the other. Um, really, no comparison for strength and durability there, which brings me to the rollover protection. Here, this is just a pretty thin tubing, um, which I have often questioned if it's a true rollover protection. Okay, I'm gonna guess it's inch and a quarter, inch and a half tops. And then you come over here to the uh, Intimidator. It's a solid two inch bar. You could see the welds on the, the handlebars. Uh, this is definitely a true rollover protection this roof. And you can see the thinner bars on the Hunt V. By the way, these are both flagship models. Both the top dogs. Of course, this is the only electric that Intimidator offers, um, but they were both flagships. Again, we take a look at the rear. This one, I got the three person option on the Hunt V. So this folds down into a seat. You can only fit two across. In the Intimidator, it's built to fit three full adults across here with a custom heavy-duty seat. And this is an electric tilt-tipping dump box. I got the XD4 package, so this dump box is useful and can carry... I forgot the load, but it's one of the heaviest around. Where this dump box, well, it's not really a dump box, it doesn't dump at all. But a problem with this Hunt V suspension that I've ran into is if you put a third person in the back, you're rubbing the knobbies because the suspension can't hold it. I called them about that. I had to tighten this one, I believe the left or the right side. I tightened it almost all the way or all the way and it still does it. And I'm not talking big people. I have thin people on board. And then of course the beef, uh, you could see the size of the tubes here on the Hunt V. It has the rear engine where this has an actual rear differential and the single engine there. 
and quite hefty on the suspension. They both have a two inch rear receiver, but the Intimidator also has a two inch front receiver. And while I'm on brakes, they all both have four wheel disc brakes. Check this out on the brakes. The Hunt V started wearing low. I tried adjusting it to no avail. So I called the sales guy and here's your brake cylinder. Right behind that tubing there is a cylinder and you need one of them snubby little screwdrivers to get in there and undo four Phillips. I've done this so I know to add brake fluid. And here's a novel idea on the Intimidator. There's a master cylinder, a true master cylinder. It's easily accessible. And all you do is screw the cap off and add your brake fluid. Because if you're in hill country like me, you will wear the brakes down. Now looking at some of the options, this XD4 package, it's another thousand bucks, but to me worth it. It comes with headlights, high beams, low beams, turn signals, a horn, the uh, electric dump box, which is quite convenient and slick, because I do use the electrics for work. Uh, the interior is just higher quality. Everything is thicker and beefier. You've actually got a lever here with a park in it, which is super convenient. For anyone who drives on hills, you know how convenient a park is instead of relying on the parking brake. On that Hunt V, I got to mash the parking brake down and lock it in. It's kind of golf cart style. And often on steep hills, I'll hear it creaking. It's creaking down the hill even with maximum pressure put on. The Intimidator actually has a speedometer and the power gauge is a lot higher quality in my estimation compared to the Hunt V. And here's your options. Four wheel drive. Here's one the Hunt V doesn't even have. Locking differentials. It's got an automatic on the rear and the front. Now you lock this and you're in true, true four wheel drive. Uh, this is the dump box. I don't have the key on so it's not going to work. You got a cigarette lighter and two really nice cup holders here which I happen to use quite regular and then that's the winch. Let's look at the Hunt V. For shifting the Hunt V this is all you got here. You got a forward and reverse and when you're sitting on the machine it's right under your leg. It's a royal pain shifting back and forth so there's no indicator on the dashboard. Uh, the dash is just not the quality as the Intimidator. Here's the battery indicator. This is my blackout lights, which was an option. It's a little green lights in the front. You got the headlights here, the off on switch, and this is the generator starter for this theoretical hybrid. Uh, it's not a true gas hybrid in the sense where the gas engine drives it. This just starts a gas generator, all right, and then it charges your batteries, which I have found a solution for that on the Intimidator. And here you got a, your uh, gas and the brake, and this is the only way to hold it is the parking brake. Whereas over here you have an actual park. All right, here I think is going to be one big difference in hopefully battery time. I don't know this yet. This is one large engine here, made in Germany, and it drives the front and the rear. Whereas the Hunt V actually has a front and a gas electric motor running the front and the rear wheels, which I'm not an electrician, but I believe is gonna suck more juice. I have been stuck in the field in the Hunt V. It's no fun. Steering wheel is a fixed position here on the Hunt V. On the Intimidator, you have an adjustable, you see that little hydraulic. You can adjust the steering wheel up and down. Windshield, I ordered each of them with the folding windshield. Um, just from the naked eye, the Intimidators is thicker and they close this top gap off, which I like. And then you could fold it down. It's got a heavier duty rubber 
uh, holder up on the top and this one is quite flimsical and the actual windshield is thicker as well on the Intimidator. The roof, uh, the option for the roof is aluminum which they make at Intimidator. Very sturdy, I like that. It actually costs less than the plastic option because they make it themselves. And uh, you can see on the Hunt V, you know, your typical plastic roof. And of course, the one ginormous, well, there's a lot of ginormous differences here, is the Intimidator has a high and a low range. I'm going to do some field testing now. I'm pretty sure this thing is just going to devour the Hunt V. And when I bought the Hunt V, this is the best one I could find on the market. So it also shows how quickly they're developing, but they're only a year apart. Let's do some field testing. All right, I just got to show you the dump box. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong one. That's the winch. Here it is. That's pretty slick for people like me who actually do do work with the electric vehicles. And believe me, I could fit another person in the rear because it is a lot bigger. All right, let's go put them to some tests. Okay, the first test is just simply up the gravel driveway. The Hunt V spins the front tires on the loose gravel all the time. So I'm curious to see how the uh, Intimidator does. Of course, I'll try it in high gear first as a comparison with the Hunt V, but then I'll try it in low gear. front tire slippage my personal theory is that the weight is too far back on this particular vehicle okay now the intimidator I'll go in four wheel high since the hunt V is always in four wheel which brings me to another option this is switchable between two wheel and four wheel drive now the intimidator Four wheel high, virtually no slippage at all, even in high gear. It's a little tricky getting the gears in, it's brand spanking new. amount of torque. I'm not sure. And that was two wheel drive. Uh, came up nicely. Virtually no slippage, just in two wheel. Alright, now we're going to try coming up a steep grass embankment. This is the pond embankment. Four wheel drive, high gear, right away with Intimidator. Now 
problem in high gear. And now for the Hunt V. Keep an eye on the front right tire. Uh, she's spinning again, not grabbing. Same thing, front end spinning, not catching. Try some fresh sod. Same thing. All right, while I'm here, I'm gonna show you some stability. It's a pretty extreme angle where I feel tippiness already with the Hunt V. Not quite ready to tip, but I could feel the tippiness. All right, now the Intimidator. Not sure if you could tell by uh, looking, but it's much more comfortable on on a uh, hillside. All right, I'm gonna take the Intimidator all the way down to the bottom and climb these hills that I know how the uh, Hunt V does, like this hill that I'm on right now. The Hunt V cannot take this hill without spinning the tires. And I'm in high gear, same as the Hunt V, not even exercising the low gear. And it just complete traction. Uh, in, an, in the Hunt V's defense, this is definitely a bigger and badder vehicle, but they're about the same price. They're both expensive, but this seems to be packing a whole lot more punch, the Intimidator. When I go up that very last hill, uh, we'll see how it does. I already know it's going to do better, but I'll turn the camera back on and I'll take a look at my food plots while I come through here. Another thing I've noticed now with the Intimidator is braking on steep declines. It holds a lot more traction. Um, bigger tires and heavier weight will do it, but it holds a lot more traction. Here's my lower plot. The left is the winter greens and the right is the chicory. Uh, it's doing quite well. It's doing quite well. Up this hill. I 
also posted a video of the Hunt V going up this hill pulling my water uh, roller. And it made it up pulling that thing, but it was spinning the whole way. So here we go, high gear, four wheel drive, nice and slow. Plus the traction. There's a little spinach right there. A little bit more. Two spots. Otherwise it's a lot quieter because that hunt bee is spinning all the way up and you see these little bitty rocks it's spinning making a big ruckus. Very good test. There it is man, that is a badass machine. I'll tell you that. And I'll bring you my conclusions here shortly. All right, <clears throat> so my initial assessment of the Intimidator is it's badass machine. It's extremely capable. I mean extremely, almost where it could be dangerous. It's got a safety feature that if you saw some of the, my trouble shifting is I think it's a safety feature where when you go forward or reverse and you stop and try to go again, it needs this pause for the engine to reset. Not a big deal, I'll get used to it. But uh, yeah, I mean, for being the same price tag as the Hunt V, um, it's a world of difference. World of difference. I'm thinking about putting that one up for sale. It's not even a year old. So I'll keep testing this one. I'm going to take it over to the Missouri farm, which is really hilly, really steep. But I know this thing will handle it after driving it this afternoon for an hour and a half testing it. So I hope that helps if anybody's out there looking at the electric UTVs. Between the 15 Intimidator and the 14 Switchback, I believe it's not really even close. Hands down on the Intimidator. Now when it comes to battery life and that, I guess I'll get back to you on that after I drive it for a while. But my solution is I bought a Honda generator. I called engineering and they said it would work for emergencies. So I'm going to strap the, 2000, the EU 2000 Honda generator to this machine so if I should get stuck fire up the generator for 15 minutes and that ought to be enough to get me home. So there you have it. All right, day two of testing. I decided to take this testing to the next level. More reality on testing the power of these two machines. Because I do use them for food plotting. And one of the things I do is run a drag, which is a big heavy piece of metal that catches dirt and gets even heavier as you drag it. I try to minimize my use of the electrics, but I do use them. So I'm going to drag a big oak log with these two and uh, show you the differences. Interesting, technically speaking, the Hunt V has more horsepower. It has two engines, front and back. But I'm here to tell you that this Intimidator is destroying it on the horsepower and the torque end, and the speed for that matter, even in high gear. Of course, I don't have a speedometer on the Hunt V, but my foot tells me the obvious, the painfully obvious, that not only in high gear is it faster and more power, but obviously the low gear, which the Hunt V doesn't have. So just take a quick look at the uh, two inch receiver on the back of each of these machines. And then I'm gonna hook up a chain and a large oak log. All right, here is the Intimidator. Just look at the beef and the thickness of this receiver. All right. It is pretty impressive for an electric UTV. And now here's the Hunt V. Notice it's tied into this foot rail step here. And it's only tied into the frame via that little flat tongue piece there. 
All right, and you notice these frame bars are much thinner. So big difference there, which tells you the strength and durability difference, I believe, that I will prove. Okay, for my oak log selections, I am not going to take this biggest one, but I'll take this center log right here. It's a 12 or 14 footer, I can't tell for sure, because I was going to take it in for a log, and it looks like red oak, and it's solid. I mean, I'm going to guess minimum 300, maybe 400. I'll try to make this as apples as op apples to apples as possible. And I'm gonna run them each up this little incline here of kind of gravelly dirt. So it will be on an incline. Get an idea on traction and power for taking that dead weight up a little incline. Okay, the first run is with the Intimidator in high four wheel drive no differentials locked we'll make it equal to the hunt v Okay, not a bad run, did have some slippage on both the front and the rear, but yanked her right up dead weight. Yeah, you can't really see it, but that is one heavy log. I almost tipped my tractor over, or almost tipped the back wheels up on a slight incline. So I'm gonna say that's at least a quarter ton, at least five bills. Okay, now I'm going to run the Intimidator. You're not gonna believe this, but that, I'm sorry, I'm gonna run the Hunt V now. The Intimidator was only in two wheel drive. After I pulled the log up, I looked at it and I didn't even click it in the four wheel. So the Intimidator was two wheel high. Without the diff lock, no differential lock, nothing. And that log is more than two to three or whatever I said. It's probably at least five, six hundred. I can hardly move one end with a chain on it just to scooch it over. So that is a heavy log. So we'll see how the Intimidator does. I'm sorry. The Hunt V is now. We'll see how the Hunt V does now. <clears throat> and it's kind of full-time four-wheel drive. I didn't get any differential locks on that unit. And you might be thinking, well, this ain't what these machines are made for, blah, blah, blah. That's probably true. However, you load it with three guys out hunting and all your gear, and you get into a mucky spot, you're gonna need the power and the traction. You get into an uphill situation loaded down with three full adults with hunting gear and you will need the power i guarantee you add cold weather to that 30 20 degrees and you will need as much power as possible so let's see what the hunt v is going to do with the heavy log
Okay, the Hunt V made it. Come on. The Hunt V made it with a lot more trouble in four wheel drive compared to the Intimidator in two wheel drive. Just for fun, I should bring the Intimidator back, put it in four wheel low and lock the differentials. I suppose I should do it in the interest of being thorough and show you guys. I guess I'll do that. Let me get the tractor and move the log back. Okay, now the Intimidator. Four wheel low with the differentials locked. This should be fun and I'll just creep it up. And I'm telling you that's a lot of dead weight. And I'm, I didn't manipulate the tests in any way. I put the chain on the same length, the chain on the top of the log. I hooked it up the same way on the two inch hitch and up the same route coming up the hill. So if it was close, I maybe could have done a few of them, but it wasn't even close. So let's see the Intimidator with everything it's got. Sorry, did I forget to hook up the log? Oh, yeah, it is still back there. Very nice, very nice. Here's that last eight, ten feet. Just crawling in low here. That's about as tough a field trial as I can give it for traction and strength. So you could see, even though on paper the Hunt V has more horsepower and it has two engines, a front and a rear, the Intimidator has more power, even though it's less horsepower. Yeah, I remember Chris Farley, that show. Even though I never slept with a girl, <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Uh, but even though it's technically less horsepower, I believe on the paper, that Intimidator is just a brute. I mean a brute. And it is advertised as being bigger and beefier than the other UTVs. You know, the other ones are made more for hunting. But I could use this for hunting and work. Where on the other one, it's not going to go that way as good. So... I might come up with another test or two. If not, this will be the end. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks. clarify something for you as it stands right now between the Intimidator and the Hunt V. I've learned a lot in the last few days. The Intimidator comes with regen programmed at 50% from the factory, which in a nutshell, regen is the electric machine's way of engine braking. So when you're going up or down inclines, if you have a low gear on a pickup truck or an ATV that has engine braking, the engine will slow you down. The Hunt V does not have that right now. I've been trying to get them to program it for me and change it, but as of yet, they haven't gotten back to me. So I'm gonna show you the Intimidator, but basically with the Hunt V, either up or downhill, you have to be mashed and standing on the brake. Otherwise, if you let the brake go, you'll go free rolling down the hill whether you're going up or down. 
I'm going to show you the Intimidator now with the regen programmed on it. You don't even need a brake. You just stay on the gas or let go and the electric engine, the electric motor will hold you in place. No foot on the brake. That's the electric engine holding this in position right now. Right, electric motor is holding that thing right now. I'm kind of scared out here in case it gives. I'm still learning this machine. There's no brake. It's all electric motor, which is huge in my case. Uh, in Missouri and Illinois, I'm all in hill country, okay? So Anna doesn't wear the brakes then. So it's basically electric engine braking programmed in. I don't know if Hunt V changed that for 2015, but my 2014 has no regen right now and I'm trying to get them to get back to me to get it in. Customer service with Intimidator thus far has been excellent. Hunt V, mediocre. They did give me a set of heavier batteries because the battery life was, was virtually a quarter of what they advertised and I'm in hilly country so they changed the batteries but like I said before my opinion and I'm proving it my testing with these two machines in the same amount of driving the exact same amount the Hunt V was down to 50 percent and the Intimidator was still at 90. Now, I believe it's because of the two direct drive motors sucking more juice on the Hunt V compared to one brushless motor on this with a transmission. The transmission is where you're getting your power. The two direct drive motors on the Hunt V, the front and the rear axles or the wheels, it's direct drive. So you got two motors here the transmission is helping you with the torque. You got one brushless motor so I believe this will last a lot longer on battery life, but I can't say for certain yet. But during the testing, the Hunt V sucked down to halfway, and this was still at 90% for what that's worth. As objective as I could make it. No foot on the brake. That's the electric engine holding this in position right now. Right, electric motor is holding that thing right now. I'm kind of scared out here in case it gives. I'm still learning this machine. There's no brake. It's all electric motor, which is huge in my case. Uh, in Missouri and Illinois, I'm all in hill country, okay? So Anna doesn't wear the brakes then. So it's basically electric engine braking programmed in. I don't know if Hunt V changed that for 2015, but my 2014 has no regen right now and I'm trying to get them to get back to me to get it in. Customer service with Intimidator thus far has been excellent. Hunt V, mediocre. They did give me a set of heavier batteries because the battery life was, was virtually a quarter of what they advertised and I'm in hilly country 
so they change the batteries but like I said before my opinion and I'm proving it my testing with these two machines in the same amount of driving the exact same amount the hunt V was down to 50 percent and the intimidator was still at 90 now, I believe it's because of the two direct drive motors sucking more juice on the hunt V compared to one brushless motor on this with a transmission the transmission is where you're getting your power the two direct drive motors on the hunt V the front and the rear axles or the wheels it's direct drive so you got two motors here the transmission is helping you with the torque you got one brushless motor so I believe this will last a lot longer on battery life but I can't say for certain yet but during the testing the Hunt V sucked down the halfway and this was still at 90 percent for what that's worth as objective as I could make it